I want to talk about something that came up a few days ago unexpectedly. The computer behind me is featuring the FX8300. If you haven't seen that build already, I attempt to show you the build in three minutes or less in a YouTube video that you can check out in the card above me. Uh, but nonetheless, I put it together and I ran it through a series of benchmarks and then I also put it up head to head against the i360-100. If you haven't seen that video, you can also check that one out in the card above me if the one beforehand has finally moved out of the way. Uh, but I, I like the PC. It, it honestly is pretty good. And what I wanted to do for this video uh, was edit everything and record everything on the... I should also kind of minimize this. Someone told me this was just, just trashy to keep to keep my, my audio script up here. It's just trashy, right? Uh, I'm just going <laughs> to... Whatever, I'll minimize it. Uh, but I wanted to show you that I that this this build will allow you to video edit and audio edit and do all of that no problem. Uh, the the eight cores in the CPU are, are more than plenty for what you need to do uh, video editing wise. Now it's nothing like an i7 or a Xeon. Speaking of which, I have a Xeon build on the way. It will be here uh, when I move back to Florida over the weekend. So t uh, stay tuned for that. But in in this regard, I had a problem because this computer stopped working on me uh, two days ago. And this was after I had already benched it against the 6100, uh, and, and I thought that the overclock was stable. Now, the overclock was hard to do. It was hard to get it to 4.4, and that's like, that, that's uncommon, because most FX processors will get to 4.4, no problem. Like, you really don't have to change much of anything at all. Um, in, in some cases, they don't even have to change the voltage. I think 1.35 or 1.4 volts, some of them kind of vary. Uh, but the stock voltage out of the box is usually good enough for a 4.4 gigahertz overclock. And uh, so when I overclocked it for the sake of the benchmarks to 4.4 from its, I think it turbos to 4.2, let me see, uh, yeah, it turbos to 4.2. So it's already doing that on its own out of the box. So an, an extra 200 megahertz really isn't going to stress it all that much, right? And that's what I expected. Uh, but it, it was it was actually quite troublesome to get it to 4.4. Uh, the computer was quite unstable, and I was using a, a very good cooler. I used the X31 uh, Kraken from NZXT, which I used to cool my 6600K before I purchased my X60 cooler, the 280mm rad, uh, which is in that PC currently. Uh, but I, I expected the X31 to cool it just fine, but it was having trouble doing so, and I'm, I wasn't sure whether to blame the, the water cooler, and that was, that was going to be really tough for me, because the water cooler was actually a, a very good cooler, uh, or just to blame the processor and just, you know, striking out on the silicon lottery deal. So... I looked further into the issue, uh, and this I especially looked further into it after the computer crashed on me and would not turn back on. Well, I should clarify. Okay, so I turned the computer on. This was two days ago after I'd already benchmarked everything, and I would get I would get a response from the tower itself. The LEDs would turn on, the CPU fan would act strange. It would turn on and then it would stop turning and then attempt to turn a few times. I have some clips of that that you're seeing right now. Uh, but it would behave erratically uh, like that. And uh, the most noticeable and most troublesome part about this was the fact that I wasn't getting any feed to the monitor whatsoever. And so that's what I want to talk about in this video very briefly uh, is, is are the steps that I went through to fix the issue. And, and there wasn't actually many steps at all. And, and that's what I, I kind of want to I guess pass along to you if you don't already know about this uh, little step here uh, because it could save you a lot of time in the long run because I can I can imagine a lot of people putting together a PC for the first time and then uh, having this problem not having any signal being sent to the monitor and then just arming everything just returning it all back to the vendor back to Newegg back to Amazon you know having to pay for that return shipping which I find to be quite ridiculous and then waiting all over again for new parts to arrive and crossing your fingers hoping that the same problem doesn't arise again uh, so to fix this issue for a lot of you I think this is this is something that's that it's good to know um, and I, I'm sure a lot of you do know this and I'm sure I'm, I'm just <laughs> preaching to the choir here but I would like to tell you what I did to fix the issue so I wasn't getting any signal to the monitor right but I was getting a response from the computer so the first thing I did was turn the computer off and uh, I unplugged the computer and uh, held the power button down with the computer completely unplugged from everything. This this drains a lot of the extra juice that's stored in the capacitors, flushes all that out so the computer is completely dead, or almost completely dead, so you can start messing with stuff on the PCB without worrying about shorting things out or getting shocked or whatever. Uh, so with all of that finished up, the first thing I decided to do was take out the graphics card. Um, I took that out and kind of checked to make sure everything was okay there. Uh, the graphics card in this in the case of this build is is crucial because there are no integrated graphics uh, on the FX uh, 
uh, 8300 and so now some motherboards do come with built-in uh, graphics radon graphics uh, built into the motherboard but this one does not this is a gigabyte 990 fx board uh, but it does not have integrated graphics on the board uh, so because of that a graphics card is vital without a graphics card you won't have anything to plug your computer into i mean there, there are literally i know you can't see it here but there are no uh there are no device outputs no video outputs on the on the actual rear I.O. So you have to have a graphics card there. So the first thing I did was take out the graphics card, kind of double check, make sure there weren't anything, uh, weren't weren't things that were, uh, I guess, noticeably wrong with the card. You check the back of the PCB, make sure that you don't have any fried resistors or transistors or any of that stuff, not transistors, but just things you can tell that don't look right. Um, and I did notice that the, the BIOS switch was set to slave, and I switched that back to, to uh, to master, uh, slave and master, that's old stuff, that's old school. We're talking like back in the IDE eras of hard disk drives and CD drives and whatnot, but uh, I switched that back to master. Now it was working fine in slave before, so I, I'm not sure that if that changed anything at all, uh, but it should have been in master because there's only one of them there. Uh, and that's the main BIOS for the graphics card, I believe. So I switched that back to master, but that, that's not really what fixed the issue um, because like I said, it was like that beforehand. It was in slave position and, and it, it worked just fine. Uh, so I kept the graphics card out, and then the, the second thing that I did, which ultimately ended up fixing the issue, uh, was clearing my CMOS. So now the CMOS, or CMOS, whatever, you, however you want to call it, CMOS, okay, uh, that is uh, something that you want to reset if, you're, if you want to basically f f wipe your BIOS, uh, I guess is the easy way to say it. So you clear your CMOS when you want your BIOS settings completely uh, restored back to default. So let's say that you're overclocking your graphics card and uh, whoop de doo you end up pushing, I don't know, uh, too high of a frequency with not enough voltage. So your CPU isn't barely even booting up. I mean, your, your PC's turning on and it's turning off right away. There's nowhere near enough voltage to sustain that frequency and it keeps pooping out on you over and over and over again. It just keeps shutting off instantaneously. Well, there's not much you can do there in terms of hardware replacement, right? I mean, you can replace everything, but that's completely pointless. Uh, and I can see how in those situations people would freak out and end up sending everything back just because they don't know what to do next. And this is why I think this video is important because the, the a very simple thing that you can do uh, if you have done something incorrectly within your BIOS is clear CMOS. Now, clearing your CMOS completely wipes all of your previous BIOS settings back to stock. So the way that you attained your motherboard uh, and plugged it in for the first time and jumped into your BIOS, that's how it will look when your CMOS is cleared. Uh, so that's what I did. Now, I didn't find the jumper. Usually, you can, you can remove a jumper from the far right two prongs to the to the far left two prongs and then uh, kind of cycle through, uh, do a couple power cycles, and it'll wipe your your BIOS clean then, uh, but it didn't. I didn't. I didn't find that. I didn't find the actual jumpers to switch over. So I ended up removing the battery. Now in this particular case, uh, I ended up having to power the PC back on, let it do its whole boot loop thing that it kept doing without sending signal to the monitor, uh, and then I, I turned off the PC, unplugged it, but I didn't drain all the power out of the capacitors. And that's important because once you hold that button down, that power button on the top of the PC, you've you've completely wiped out all the juice that's stored in the capacitors, especially those capacitors that are very close to the, the BIOS chip. Um, and when you don't have power running through the BIOS chip with the battery removed or with the CMOS jumper switched to the reset position, your BIOS will not reset and nothing will happen at all. So it's important to have that extra juice stored in there and that's why they recommend um, immediately after turning off your power, uh, after turning off your PC, uh, either pulling out the battery or switching the jumpers. And then once that happens, you want to sit for about 10 or 15 minutes is the recommended dose of time. Uh, wait that 10 or 15 minutes for the PC to completely cycle through and uh, reset your CMOS. And that's going to completely wipe your BIOS clean. It won't get rid of your BIOS. <laughs> your BIOS will still be there as long as you're not uh, Q flashing or anything like that. Uh, so that it's a completely safe process. But just note that when you do this, all of your previous BIOS settings will be completely reset to stock. So all of your overclock settings, all of your voltage settings, uh, your your boot order, all of that will be completely restored. So once you do clear this uh, and you either switch the jumper back to the normal position or reinsert the battery and then power back on your PC, everything's going to be reset. So I recommend going back into your BIOS and changing the things that you know aren't going to affect your PC's performance 
like uh, the, the boot order of drive devices. So you want to make sure that your OS is on the top of the boot list. A few other things you might want to change, like your fan speed, stuff like that. But when it comes to overclocking, you want to be especially sensitive with that because that's likely what caused the computer to not want to boot in the first place. So I recommend keeping that as stock and keeping, you know, keeping that equal uh, to, to what it was out of the box to ensure that that was the problem. Uh, and that was my problem. Uh, the computer booted up just fine after I reinserted the battery after 15 minutes or so. It was actually more like five in my case, but you're supposed to wait 10 to 15 minutes uh, most of the time. So with the CMOS cleared, the computer booted up just fine. I ended up overclocking again back to what I was at originally 4.4, which you're thinking, Greg, you're going to run into the same problem again. And I probably will. Uh, but until that day comes, I, I think I'm going to try to keep it here. So that's what I wanted this video to be about. I wanted you to see the steps that I ran through, the very simple steps and uh, very few steps that, that were required to fix the issue. Uh, so that's what I recommend doing first and foremost, if your computer is not sending a signal to your monitor, especially clear your CMOS first off. That, that that I guarantee you 50% of all cases that's the problem. Uh, the other 50% being hardware related issues which are an entirely different a nightmare. Uh, but apart from that let me know what you think. Uh, I want to hear from you. I want to hear about your stories, about uh, the different scenarios you've come across when you've dealt with PCs, maybe ones that you've built or that you've purchased pre-built, uh, what you encountered, what kind of problems you had or thought you had, and what you did to fix the issues. I think that would be nice for other people to see who might be going through the same experiences currently. If you like this video in this style of format, I've kind of continued this laid-back experience, at least until I move back to Florida when I have my, my new studio completely set up and ready to go. Uh, be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you feel that way, if you feel good about it. If you don't like the video format, you didn't like the topic at hand, give it a thumbs down uh, and tell me specifically what you didn't like in the comments below. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned. We have many, many cool things planned for the channel uh, over the summer, so stay tuned for that. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.